Don't you sometimes wish that you were in a different place or could visit a different time period? How about exploring the Amazon rainforest? Or walking through a haunted Scottish castle? Having dinner on an undersea coral reef? Or buying Marie Antoinette's finest china in Versailles? Consumers can do all these things without the time required for overseas travel, the worries of catching a cold in a damp medieval building, the expense and fatigue of diving lessons, or the peril of being beheaded by the sealots from the French Revolution. The method that allows all these escapists to experience their favorite adventures is called theming. Theming is an important experiential marketing technique used by many stores, malls and service businesses. In themed environments, most of the elements are designed to tell a story in which the visitor plays a part. The physical attributes of the environment, all emotional and cognitive stimuli, the staff and the product sold should be part of the theme. Through theming, exciting, out of the ordinary artificial worlds are created in which consumers participate. Theming gives the institutional place a unique meaning. It differentiates it from the competition and makes it more attractive and interesting in the eyes of the consumer. Because of these benefits, many examples of themed environments exist in the service industry. They include theme parks, hotels, restaurants, casinos, museums, and even entire towns. In retailing, both individual stores and entire shopping malls can be themed. While any type of store can be themed, theming is particularly popular in flagship stores. But theming is not just for the big players. Small stores like this Moroccan-themed combination of fashion store and cafe can successfully use theming as well. Themed malls have also become very popular. A famous example is the Ibn Battuta Mall in Dubai. It is named after the Arab explorer Ibn Battuta. The various areas of the mall are lavishly themed to represent the far corners of the world visited by this great adventurer. Theming can help attract customers and differentiate a company from its competition, but not all attempts at theming are successful. There are several reasons for such failures. Theming can be a very capital-intensive endeavor and may ultimately prove too costly. The chosen theme may not appeal to the target group or the frontline personnel may not be appropriately trained or motivated to fulfill their role in the theme. In order to be successful, theming must be done right. Many factors contribute to successful theming, but some are particularly important. I call them the four A's of successful theming. Appropriate theme, attention to detail, authenticity, and attitude of the staff. First, choose an appropriate theme. Should your store look like a jungle, a Victorian boutique, or Star Trek's USS Enterprise? Themes can be drawn from many sources. They can reflect the physical world. For example, this popular sporting goods store for hunters, fishers, and campers has a nature and outdoor theme. But themes can also be based on religion, politics and history, fashion and popular culture, the arts, and even philosophical and psychological concepts. When selecting a theme, you should consider the values and preferences of the target group. For example, in a survey I conducted among European consumers, I found that in general, the themes Tropical Paradise, Venice, and Classical Civilization were preferred. However, the results also indicated that there are considerable differences in the preferences of men and women, as well as for different age groups. Most importantly, the consumers prefer different themes for different stores and service businesses. For example, while they liked a tropical theme in hotels, travel agencies and zoos, they found that theme much less suitable for fashion stores or supermarkets. These results are clearly placed and time-specific and shouldn't be generalized, but they do emphasize the importance of choosing the right theme for the right venture. This is a decision that should ideally be based on solid empirical data derived from marketing research. Second, pay attention to detail. When you theme a shopping environment, it's very important to stage a believable performance. Let's say your theme is Venice. Then everything must look Venetian without exception. Attention must be given to even the smallest details. 
Otherwise, the illusion created by the theme will be destroyed, which will in turn lead to disappointment or even cynical reactions from the shopper. Do you remember the nature-themed sporting goods and hunting store from before? On the floor, you can find animal tracks. Now that's attention to detail. Third, consider the appropriate level of authenticity. For instance, how important is it that an American fashion store themed as a Parisian boutique uses genuine French furniture, decorations and artwork? Some experts claim that consumers are searching for the objectively authentic, whereas others contend that consumers are searching only for an enjoyable illusion. Based on my own research on theming, I take a somewhat different position. The decision of whether to use the fake versus authentic very much depends on the background of the shoppers. When the shoppers are familiar with the culture, historical period, place or story on which the theme is based, stereotypical props and symbols should be avoided. Instead, genuine furniture and decorations should be used. In the case of the Parisian themed fashion store, if it's likely that the shoppers are familiar with French culture, let's say in an upscale store located in Manhattan, authentic French artwork and furniture should be incorporated in the design of the store. On the other hand, shoppers who show little familiarity with the culture background of the theme will be more satisfied when their stereotypical expectations are met. This explains why both highly stereotypical theming, such as the Rainforest Cafe, and themed venues where historical buildings are incorporated, such as South Street Seaport in New York or Covent Garden in London, can be highly successful. They must cater to the right people in the right place and in the right manner. Fourth, manage the attitude of the staff. The physical environment of the store is obviously essential for the theme to work, but so is the staff. A customer-centered demeanor on the part of the sales staff is a success factor in both themed and non-themed stores and service businesses. After all, what good does a carefully planned theme do if the waiter is rude or the sales clerk inattentive? In addition, the staff needs to be carefully trained and motivated to appropriately play their roles as part of the overarching theme. They have to wear the appropriate costumes for the roles. They also need to use the right words and the right accent. For example, in an Italian-themed store, the salespeople need to be able to correctly pronounce the Italian brands they sell. And equally important, they need to refrain from correcting the pronunciation of their customers. Finally, they need to have the knowledge to play their part. For example, in a high-tech themed store, the sales staff needs to be up to date with all the technology products they sell. It's not easy to get theming right, but if you keep all of this advice in mind, I have no doubt that your theme store or service business will be successful.